Well, hello everyone. Let's talk about web workers. So web workers is the way to run scripts in background threads, thus relieving your JavaScript main thread from doing a lot of heavy work. So let's get started. Well, all right. So this is what we are gonna do today. So I have this uh, basic setup, uh, index.html file, a uh, script.js file, and I have uh, turned on a live server uh, using a live server uh, plugin for the VS code. Now, uh, the thing is that we want to take some input of some data from the user uh, from the main thread, from the UI thread, and then uh, give it to the worker to do some work. So in this case, we are not doing something very advanced. Uh, we will just uh, take it and make some text uppercase. All right, so let's uh, do it. So let's first add some div here. Let's say div class holder. And inside this, let's put the input type equals text. And I'll give it an ID of uh, text, uh, what happened here? Text input. Um, then I'll have a button. I'll give it an ID of make uppercase. All right, we have got uh, the simple UI. You can see this is just some uh, text field and a button, nothing much. So we will just take uh, the text entered here and on hitting make uppercase, uh, let's just make this a text uppercase, really simple stuff. Uh, so uh, before we can spawn a worker, we need a worker file. So we will need a separate script file. So let's have a worker.js, right. Now to instantiate this worker uh, file, we need to create a worker object uh, in our main script. So let worker is new worker and we'll have to give the path to the worker file. And uh, in this case, it's worker.js. Fine, um, let's now handle the event for this make uppercase to listen for clicks. So document dot get element by ID make uppercase and on click I'll pass a function. Uh, now this is an arrow function. If you don't know about it, please check my video on the same thing. All right, now I've got this uh, event listener for handling the click. So how to contact the worker? Now this, this simple thing called post message, uh, using post message, we can communicate between the worker thread and the main thread. So uh, let's say I need the value, so worker dot post message. Now we need to send the value of the text field. So document dot get element by ID. Now what was the ID there? Text input. Let me copy it. get element by ID and dot value. Right, uh, now we'll just post it. So in the worker file, we have to write on message. Now this will handle a sort of an event uh, so that whenever any message is sent from the main thread to the worker, the worker knows it. And it will have a function with, which will accept a payload and the payload dot data will contain uh, our required data. But let's just console dot log payload right now and let's see its contents. So let me go to the browser, open the console, right. Okay, let me write some text here. Now we, you can see there is this message event object and there is a lot of information here and you can see data is null. That's a problem. Well, we need the data. Let's see why. Um, document dot get element by ID dot text value dot right here. Uh, we haven't put a bracket here. Ah, silly me. 
So um, let's check it now. So let's say worker. Yeah, now we have data worker. Really great. Okay, now you can see there is a lot of uh, information here, the target, uh, the source element, you know, everything. Uh, all this information is sometimes useful, but we won't uh, work with them now. We will just need the data. So what I'll do here is um, let upper case text uh, text is payload dot data dot to upper case. Fine. And now to send back the information to script, um, I'll use post message again. So post message uppercase text. Fine. Um, so in script, I can handle the event on message here. So whenever post message is fired from the script element, uh, the I mean the main thread, the worker will receive it in the on message event. And when worker uh, uses post message to send something back, the main thread, the main script will have to handle the on message event. So we'll have a function here. Similarly here, it will have a payload. Uh, and console.log payload check everything is working perfectly. Now let's just inspect the payload for now. That's a worker. Okay, payload dot data dot two uppercase is not a function. Why? Okay, this is a function name I think. Worker and we have got worker in caps, you see, in the data part. All right, now what we'll do is take this, the text fields value and set it to payload.data. I think this will work. Um, this bracket won't be there, fine. Okay, let's write something, let's a worker. And everything is working perfectly. So you see that uh, this is a pattern that we use. We take some input, we take some uh, information from the main thread, pass it to the worker, and then get back the value from the worker. So this is the use case. These are the use case for workers, like to do some heavy work, some maybe network requests um, from the worker, because worker has the access to make network requests it uh, has the access to many APIs, but one thing that worker does not have, and it's being asked a lot in the web community, is that it needs to have DOM access. But currently, worker has no DOM access, so you cannot do any DOM manipulation from it. So the pattern is that you take the information from the uh, main thread, pass it to the worker, worker does the work, and it returns the result of the work, and then the main thread um, changes the DOM. Now workers, you know, they have been there for a long time actually, but uh, they were really underrated feature of the web, but now we are using workers to do some great things. But uh, let's talk about some, you know, pitfalls. So we need to minimize the, the communication between the main thread and the worker. So like post message. Uh, post message takes this data from the main thread to the worker. Now, workers actually spawn OS level threads. And so passing a message is necessarily doing inter-process communication, sorry, inter-thread communication. So that's not really performance, that's not really performance friendly. So we need to minimize that because we are using workers to make our page performant, right? And using something like um, some very interactive use case that user interacts with the thing a lot and we are sending that uh, interact uh, interaction events to the workers in you know in some milliseconds that will make our page really so slow we will get a reverse effect so we don't really want that so what we want to do is take some 
um, data, give it to the worker, leave it there, and let the worker do its work. And when it is done, we can take the even we can take the result and change our DOM. So one more thing that uh, you know workers do a long work and maybe we need to terminate them. So we can do that by this function called worker dot terminate. Yeah, actually we can do a lot more things with worker, but I just covered the introduction part here. So yeah, I think that will be it for this video. Please uh, like if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.